Making a living by renovating millions of nature's homes, these small beavers are doing what humans have failed at for centuries, saving dead rivers, restoring scorched riparian forests, and cracked plains across Washington. After more than 400 years of being hunted nearly to extinction for hat making, they are being reintroduced into landscapes once considered dead. No trees, no flowing water, salmon gone, and farmers exhausted from fighting over every last inch of water. So how do they bring these barren lands back to life? Or conversely, what must humans do to ensure we don't turn their return into a new disaster? In this episode, we uncover the secret behind one of nature's most astonishing comebacks. Beginning now. Nature has been sending out an SOS so loud that if Earth had a danger alarm, it would have been blaring non-stop since the early 2000s, and we've been pretending not to hear it. In the Pacific Northwest, ecosystems entered a collapse unlike anything seen before. Record-breaking heat waves, relentless droughts, and wildfires that swallowed up to 70% of riparian forests. Summer water temperatures rose past survival thresholds, killing salmon eggs and blocking adult migrations entirely. But this crisis is not limited to Washington. Nationwide, the U.S. now ranks among the countries with the fastest declining river systems in the world. The clearest example is the Mississippi, the artery that supports 40% of the nation's landmass. Centuries of damming rivers, building levees, and carving channels have distorted natural flows so severely that every summer, a massive, dead zone forms off the Gulf of Mexico. There, nitrate and phosphorus from agriculture and industry reach levels three to five times higher than safety limits, creating a suffocating low-oxygen water mass spanning thousands to over 20,000 square kilometers, a place where almost nothing can survive. This decline comes with staggering losses. The Upper Mississippi alone has lost nearly half of its historic floodplain forests since the 1800s, erasing what was once one of America's richest biodiversity hotspots. In that context, Washington fell into a familiar death spiral. Forests burn, forests vanish, soils erode, mudslides follow, water turns toxic, salmon die, and eventually even the land itself collapses. And as if that weren't enough, during the dry season, up to 70% of the Akama River's flow becomes recycled wastewater loaded with nitrate, phosphate, and pesticides, transforming the river into a boiling cauldron of toxic algae under the summer sun. Imagine being challenged to survive a single day here. How long do you think you'd last before giving up? Faced with a landscape sinking deeper into despair, humans had no choice but to search for solutions more powerful than anything they had tried before. Building a reservoir, a massive structure meant to capture disappearing water, sounds promising until you look at the price. $500,000 to $2 million for a single basin, in exchange for carving open entire landscapes and disrupting the ecosystems that depend on them. The second solution, diverting water from major rivers. Bold on paper, impossible in reality. Most projects are halted instantly by layers of regulations, and every meter of pipe must survive environmental reviews, as grueling as an asylum application from Mexico to the United States. And when large-scale engineering began to falter, humans tried to imitate nature by constructing artificial beaver dams in Utah and Oregon. But a 2017 University of Idaho study revealed an uncomfortable truth. Just a few heavy rainstorms can knock these fragile structures apart. They demand constant repairs and still can't replicate the complex ecological functions of real beavers. Then came a bold idea, one that sounded almost ridiculous at first. Let the beavers do the job they've perfected over millions of years. But the surprising part? 
Farmers and ecologists alike agreed almost instantly. Why? Because the truth is simple. Long before Methow and Yakima dried out, these valleys once held nearly 40,000 beaver dams, operating non-stop and at zero cost, creating a water network no modern project could ever replace. People weren't worshipping beavers. They were simply confronted with history and forced to admit that nature had solved this problem far better than we ever did. To understand the real power of beavers, start with what their dams actually are. Each one isn't merely a wooden barrier across a stream, it's a natural water storage station, slowing the current, trapping sediment, cooling the flow, and expanding nutrient-rich wetlands. When beavers were hunted to near extinction, this entire network of biological pump stations vanished and rivers dried out as if someone had unplugged the whole system. But beavers weren't always rare. Go back to the 16th century, when waves of European trappers swept across North America, driven by an insatiable demand for pelts and castorium. Then came one of the most baffling fashion trends humans ever created, the beaver fur hat. It didn't take long for a collapse. A population once estimated at over 400 million plummeted to just 10 to 15 million, a decline of more than 95% in only a few centuries. The ecological fallout was predictable. One mistake triggered a cascade of bigger ones. Believing engineering could replace nature, we straightened winding streams, poured concrete into riverbeds, and forced water to flow as fast as possible. In winter, this produced flash floods. In summer, the same rivers turned into dry basins. And the lesson couldn't be clearer. No human-built structure can compete with a system beavers have been refining for millions of years. So in 2008, one of the boldest and most effective ecological restoration projects in the United States began, the Methow Beaver Project. Instead of killing nuisance beavers in suburban areas, ecologists adopted an entirely new approach, safely trapping them, conducting health checks, implanting GPS chips, giving them ID names, and transporting them by specialized trucks to the Methow and Yakama Highlands, the landscapes their ancestors once called home. The plane makes a careful approach, ready for the drop. But moving beavers has never been simple. Highly sensitive to stress and capable of injuring themselves when panicked, beavers must be handled through a carefully controlled, low-stress process. The box opens, and a most unusual and novel trip ends for Mr. Beaver. After being captured in humane traps, they are covered to reduce anxiety, placed in cooled transport compartments with water and branches to chew on. At the release site, Teams carry each crate down to the stream's edge and open it slowly, letting the beaver step out on its own terms. What makes this model remarkable is its incredibly low cost, only $1,500 to $2,000 per beaver pair, covering capture, transport, monitoring, and care. Up to 15 times cheaper than building even a small artificial dam with similar ecological function and the results exceeded every expectation. By 2020, the Methow Basin alone had reintroduced over 300 beavers across more than 60 sites, achieving an adaptation success rate of up to 70%, an impressive figure for a species known for its strong territorial behavior. At first, scientists only hoped the beavers would stay put, chew a few branches, and maybe build a small dam or two. No one expected them to resurrect an entire desertified landscape. Yet within just a few seasons, the beavers began doing what they do best, building. Beavers don't build dams for fun. They build to survive. By raising water levels, they shield themselves from coyotes, lynx, and even humans. A deep, quiet pond also provides the stable, by protected nursery, they need to raise their kits during their most vulnerable months.
as water spreads, ponds form, roots regain moisture, and grasses begin to return. Within just three six weeks of release, the first dams appear. Modest structures only 60 to 90 centimeters tall, rough and unassuming. But the power of a beaver dam has nothing to do with size. It lies in its structure and its physics. A beaver dam begins with a framework of large branches, layered with smaller sticks interwoven like biological rebar, then packed with mud and stones, forming a semi-permeable barrier that doesn't stop water but slows it, reducing pressure and allowing it to seep gently into the surrounding soil. That slow, steady seepage creates underground water bands stretching hundreds of meters, an effect so complex and so stable that even multi-million dollar irrigation systems struggle to replicate it. When small beaver dams hold water long enough in the soil, a chain of almost miraculous transformations begins to spread. Stable moisture cools the ground, bacteria, earthworms, and insects return, and a rich layer of humus forms, the foundation of a habitat that supports more than 80% of the wildlife around each wetland. The shade from regenerating forests keeps stream temperatures below 20 degrees Celsius, the survival threshold for salmon eggs. As a result, juvenile Chinook salmon densities in areas with beaver dams are five times higher than in areas without them, and survival rates from egg to fry rise from 27% to 33%. Not only natural dams, artificial beaver dam analogs BDAs, recreate these benefits as well. At a stream in Oregon, more than 120 BDAs increase the survival of juvenile steelhead trout by over 50%. All of this comes from the engineering of a single species, the quiet, tireless beaver, at nearly zero cost. A report from Okanogan County shows that artificial restoration is 40 times more expensive than letting beavers do the work while a single stable beaver dam after three years can save farmers three to $7,000 each dry season. Even so, the success of the Methow and Yakama watersheds doesn't hide the fact that beavers are not a perfect solution for every landscape. The most significant conflicts between humans and beavers occur on farmland. When a dam is built in the wrong place, it can flood agricultural land, block irrigation flows, damage canals, drainage pipes, or even rural roads. During heavy rainfall, a failed beaver dam can release a sudden surge of water, causing localized flooding, particularly dangerous in communities located along creeks. For these reasons, simply releasing beavers and letting them figure it out is completely unrealistic. While beavers are not a universal solution for every landscape, they are widely regarded as one of the most successful ecological restoration models of the 21st century. Today, organizations such as the Methow Beaver Project and the Beaver Restoration Coalition are not only continuing to reintroduce beavers into the Methow, Yakama, and Okanogan watersheds, but are entering a new phase of restoration combining the beaver's ancient instincts with modern technology. They use thermal sensors, moisture monitors, and AI systems to track each dam and measure its impact on the entire ecosystem, from groundwater levels and the return of waterfowl to crop productivity and the recovery rate of riparian forests. Over the next decade, Washington plans to restore at least 500 kilometers of headwater streams using beaver-based technology, while also training indigenous communities, farmers, and students to take part in the process. And the lesson here is not only biological. It's about belief. In a world where we are told that every solution must come from a high-tech laboratory, a billion-dollar project, or an endless stream of data, the story of the beaver reminds us that nature does not need to be reinvented. It only needs the chance to function. 
If beavers can revive a dying river, perhaps it's time for us to relearn how to listen to the land, the water, and the flow of life itself. If this story amazed you, or challenged the idea that only humans can rebuild the world, leave a comment and share your thoughts on this extraordinary, nature-driven restoration model.